Lucky last comes from Australia from Anonymous. Too bad if it got lost, they never would have got it back. Oh well, so uh, here we go from Australia, not Austria. Let's have a look. What have we got? Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, Sinclair. Clive Sinclair. Woohoo! The Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Brilliant. I'm sure this is bringing back a lot of memories for uh, those vintage computer buffs. So I'm going to save this for a teardown Tuesday. It will be have another vintage teardown, but uh, it's got a date on there. Anyway, made in the UK. Fantastic. Sir Clive Sinclair and the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. I wonder if it works. I don't know, but uh, I've never actually used one. I don't think they were that huge here anyway. Oh, yeah, I don't think this is working at all because there's no 9 volt uh, power jack in there. But uh, yeah, we've got some uh, cartridge expansion here microphone, earphone, and TV composite output. Really bare bones stuff. But this thing, you know, as with all Sinclair stuff, built down to a price, does the bare basics. And uh, well, it was quite popular for its day and um, probably one of the largest selling computers in the UK if I'm not wrong but there you go beautiful and uh, you know the old uh, rubber um, uh, keyboard you know not that great no tactile uh, feedback on those things they've got the basic commands printed on their list being in key random int cos sign tan peak peak and poke oh those were the days and uh, you could change your color blue red magenta green cyan fantastic True video, whatever that is, caps lock, graphics mode. Ah, oh, beautiful. Hi Dave, I notice you have a taste for Sinclair products. I do indeed, so please accept this Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48K. Oh, massive for display in your museum. I was hesitant to send it down in its, in its extremely non-working condition, but after seeing your appreciation of the Sinclair TV and the C5, I decided to do it. I have my own Sinclair C5 now. It's parked down in my parking space down the bottom, but it's a fixer-upper. Unfortunately, hmm, it's a bit crusty. Anyway, I've got one. I'm proud owner of Sinclair C5 now, and now a Sinclair ZX Spectrum. As you may guess, the unit is non-functional, as is the case with the TV you received. I have taken a part uh, from this unit to get another ZX uh, Spectrum up and running. Parts taken include DC barrel connector, the Ferranti ULA, oh, completely gone, two of the high DRAM, some of the um, ZTEX transistors and the keyboard membrane connectors. Oh man, no, okay, well, it was probably, yeah, dead to begin with. He's curious to know why the traces on the bottom of the main board are wrinkly. Hmm, let's find out. Initially thought that maybe the resist coating was flaking off, but doesn't appear that way. Well, we'll check it out. I had the pleasure of shaking your hand at the Maker Fair in Sydney. I do remember that. And he mentioned this, I believe. That's the closest to any kind of celebrity I've ever been. I <laughs> think you need to get out more. <laughs> because I'm not a celebrity. So thanks for taking the time to chat. I appreciate it. No worries. Thank you for uh, introducing yourself at Maker Fair. I do like it when people come up and say hi. So thank you very much, Brendan. Let's crack it open. I expect all uh, through-hole stuff in here. Of course, the Ferranti, uh, the main Ferranti chip is gone. Sinclair, we're obsessed with those. They use them in the Sinclair C5 and bloody everything else. You can poke a damn crow probat and oh there we go look at the oh man there's no solder mask even look at that we've just got tin plated geez they saved a couple of cents there old clive saving the old dollar to go for sort of you know the home matey uh you know it's almost like a you know a home etcher it kind of reminds me of a home etcher kind of thing with the just the tin plating in no solder mask oh goodness but that's actually neatly laid out we've got our rf modulator up here and there's our main oscillator 4.436 megahertz and you know there's the main ferranti we've got some memory in here and yeah it's removed a few things and well yeah sucked a few things out really quite ugly the regulator over here that looks a bit dodgy we have a floater Look at that, just a Bent 7805 just floating off the board there. They didn't even bother to solder it or screw it down. Ah, oh, good on you, Clive. And of course, they didn't gild the lily on the edge connector, literally. I'm quite surprised that Clive decided to spring for silkscreen on this stuff. I mean, you know, really, oh, pissing away money there, Clive. Copyright 1983, issue 3. 
But wait, look at the bottom. We have spared no expense. We've got solder mask. Look at that. Why you do it on the top and not the bottom? I don't really know. I don't get it. But there's the crinkly he's talking about. Let's check it out. And there it is. Yes, the famous uh, crinkled ground planes. Very common for the day. And the reason for that is because, well, this is all tin plated tracers. This is not SMOBC or uh, that's the acronym for solder mask over bare copper, which they do these days. Back in the old days like this, they used to just uh, tin a plate, all of the part of the manufacturing process, they just tin plate everything, uh, all the tracers and everything, including these ground planes here. And of course, if you've seen the solder coating that you get, how they increase uh, the current handling capacity of uh, solder tracers by wave flowing, you'll notice that you'll, um, you've seen this in previous videos, that it, you know, it comes up in like globs and all sorts of stuff. So there's obviously tin that uh, builds up and it's not a really nice even surface and it's not hot air leveled either, which is another uh, process. So they didn't even bother with that. So what they do is they uh, tin all of tin the copper on here and then they apply the solder mask over the top and the tin, the tin in underneath that is actually, so it's not, a lot of people think it's the solder mask crinkling, but it's not. It's actually the tin built up under there, which I've scraped that off, we'll be able to see it. So there you go, you can see that the tin is, you know, that's how the tin was actually laid down on the board, because they didn't bother to level that out. That happens on large um, solder masses like this, large thermal masses like this. That's why you generally won't see, you'll see tiny amounts on the traces there. You can see little tiny pits there, but generally the smaller traces like that are going to be pretty smooth. And you'll get parts of the ground plane that are smooth, but then the process of actually laying the tin on top of the copper just, you know, forms all of these you know, globs and traces and things like that. And then they just coat the solder mask on top. So that's why it's crinkly. And the hardware design for this was done by a guy called Richard Altwasser, who worked at Sinclair for a couple of years and then went on to a, a, a computer company, found a computer company of uh, no note and uh, went bankrupt apparently. So I wonder what he's doing these days. I wonder what he's working on. If anyone knows, hey, maybe he's even watching. Good on you, Richard. Anyway, um, here's the um, uh, NEC uh, D780C. It's a Z80 uh, equivalent, Z80 compatible uh, processor of the time. So yes, this is a classic Z80 machine. And then we've got a Sinclair branded um, Hitachi mask ROM here. And yeah, that contains a ROM. They didn't even bother socketing the thing. Once again, saved a couple of cents on the socket there. So yeah, can't upgrade the bloody firmware in the thing. And of course, most of the magic's done inside the Ferranti uh, ULA or uncommitted uh, logic array in this thing. And the graphics were simply stunning for the day. Um, text was uh, 32 columns by 24 characters. Absolutely hopeless. Um, and uh, 256 by 192 graphics in like half a dozen colours. It was, yeah, pretty crusty. But hey... You know, it was extremely popular for the day, and as with all Sinclair stuff, it was affordable. And the much-loathed uh, rubberized membrane keyboard here, um, there was a chiclet model, I think, as well. But, uh, yeah, I, I kind of always liked the look of this, you know, I liked just the color of the keys, but a lot it copped a lot of flack for it, apparently. And to get it out, you've got to prise off the front bezel like that and that's just all glued down and uh, ta-da we're in like Flynn and there's our complete rubber membrane aha right so they're using just a, a, a two part sandwiched membrane in there so then they haven't got like the carbon backing on the keys the keys are just uh, just rubber and that pushes down ah we can't even uh, separate that really I think that's yet yeah, that's molded together as one sheet so there we go there's the individual keys i'm not sure how reliable that sucker was though so that is a quick look inside the sinclair zx spectrum another clive sinclair classic and well yeah pretty crusty built down to a price but hey it was very popular in the uk so you know credit where credit's due good on you clive and thank you very much brendan for sending in this bit of vintage 
retro computer technology. We love this stuff here on the EEV blog.